the mic is yours, so when you're ready, we will uh, start the timer and uh, have you begin the first story tonight. Thank you very much. A fellow engineer whom I work with, and his father passed away last year, and uh, so a bunch of us went over to the funeral. It was a miserable day. It was raw. It was raining on and off, and it was in the summer, which we didn't expect. So when we left the cemetery, we were really happy that they had invited us to a luncheon at a really nice, cozy restaurant. When I got to the restaurant, I headed right for the men's room because of the rain, I guess, or something, you know, influenced me, or what do they call it, uh, overactive bladder or something. I came out, and there was a table that, uh, that would accommodate six, and there was one seat, and I knew most of the people at the table. So I went over and I sat down, and I realized why that seat had been left empty. <laughs> Let me draw the picture for you. All engineers, to my right was my boss, to my left was, a, was another engineer I worked with, across from my boss was another engineer who I had just met, and across from the guy sitting to my left was another engineer. In front of me was a beautiful 20-something. I had seen her at the service. I noticed her. And let me describe what she was wearing. You've seen the Pauline girl on the beer bottles? Okay. So it's, it's a barmaid's dress she had on, you know, square cut, low, with lace around it. So here I am, I'm about two feet away from her, directly across from her. And uh, I could look at her face, and I could look at my food, I could look at the guy over here, the guy over here, over here, over here, wait to somebody at one of the other tables. But it was like having a, a 21 inch TV right in front of me that had a very interesting program on it that I could not watch. <laughs> Now this lasted, what, the lunch had lasted for about an hour, so you can imagine the torture I was in. Now engineers uh, are not so good in the social realm, you know, they, they, they study physical science, not social science. So I could see the gears turning in everybody's head, I could see the smoke coming out of the ears, trying to think of something to say. And finally, I said to the girl, I said, I hope that we don't bore you with a lot of engineering talk. And she said, well, she said, that's all right. I won't bore you with a lot of lawyer talk. So I said, oh, you work with lawyers. <laughs> It was kind of a pregnant pause there. <laughs> and she kind of looked at me, not, you know, not with a real terrible look, but very direct. She said, I am a lawyer. So I never felt more like a, a male chauvinist pig in my life. So, and then the wheels are turning in everybody's head, trying to figure, okay, what can we say about law? <laughs> so, we did start to talk a little bit about law, you know, what her specialty was, and, and I don't remember a single thing she said, because I was, I was busy trying to keep my eyes here, or here, or here, or there. Okay, <clears throat> so I finally came up with the bright idea. I'm going to ask you, you know, an academic question. What if I, as a, you know, just a poor guy, go up against a company with a lawsuit. Now, how can I survive in that kind of environment? And she said, well, you know, you can get a lawyer who will only charge you if they win the case. Now, remember, my boss is sitting here. And I'm sure he's wondering, what the hell is this guy going to bring up against me or the company? So that was another huge mistake. So at the end of the, the luncheon, I was totally worn out. 
So all I can say to you guys is don't judge a woman by what she uncovers.